Thank, uh, thank you very much. Um, and it's a pleasure to be here and participate uh, digitally at the CERL International Jewelry Conference uh, for 2021. Uh, I hope that maybe next year we'll be able to visit physically um, um, as due to today's limitations. Uh, I'd like to give a word of thanks to the Seoul uh, Jewelry Industry Support uh, Center for inviting me to speak today. And I hope you'll enjoy uh, my presentation. Um, so let's jump right in. I'll just share uh, my presentation one moment. Um, so we are going to be talking about in the presentation about technology and how uh, technology uh, actually will shape uh, the diamond industry of tomorrow. Um, before I start, maybe a few words uh, about uh, Sarin, who Sarin is. Uh, we are a global uh, technology company um, that develops, uh, researches and develops technology for the diamond, uh, gemstone and jewelry industry with the main focus on uh, diamonds. Uh, we are an Israeli company headquartered in Israel uh, where we do all our research and development. Um, and we have a number of subsidiaries globally uh, in India, um, in the US in New York, which takes care of the Americas, uh, in Hong Kong, which is our hub for Asia. And then we have a, a wide range of distribution channels globally in over 40 countries, uh, including of course, uh, Korea. Um, although we are talking about uh, how technology will change the diamond industry tomorrow, actually technology has been revolutionizing the diamond industry for the past three decades. Uh, and Sareen has been introducing over the past three decades, a number of different revolutions, uh, technological revolutions that have really changed the face of the diamond industry. Um, for the first 25 years, the main focus was on diamond manufacturing how to take a rough diamond and transform it uh, into a beautiful polished diamond uh, sold uh, to the consumer. And that is where a large majority of the technological development from Serene uh, uh, was focused. Um, and as you can see in the slide, over the years, um, multiple different technologies were developed in order to optimize how rough diamonds are manufactured. Over the past five or so years, we've been focusing uh, very much on the retail side, um, how diamond, how technology can contribute and add value uh, to uh, the further downstream part of the diamond pipeline as the polished diamond is sold through wholesale, retail, and then to the consumer. As I mentioned, we are a technology company uh, investing uh, over the last decade, uh, close to $150 million in research and development. Uh, in order to create uh, added value for the diamond pipeline. And just to give you some idea of the scope of the use of technology in the uh, diamond pipeline today, uh, about 100 million diamonds pass through Serene's technologies every year. Um, to give an idea of uh, that scale, uh, you have every year approximately only 1 million uh, uh, polished diamonds above one carat. Uh, whereas the large majority of polished diamonds are below one carat. Um, and as I said, throughout different technologies, uh, through the different stages of the diamond pipeline, around about 100 million diamonds go through our technologies each year. Uh, our technologies span the entire pipeline from the mines, through the manufacturing, down to uh, and all the way down to the uh, retail today. We'll be focusing this presentation on how technology can add value to the retail part of the diamond pipeline, which, as I said, is uh, uh, fairly new in the last five years we've been developing. Uh, we have a very wide range of different technologies that are involved in many different stages of the diamond pipeline um, from, as I said, the mine through the manufacturing down to the retailer. Um, I think one of the most interesting things um, that we can look in the past two years is how uh, the situation with COVID-19 has actually dramatically accelerated the use of technology uh, in the diamond industry, uh, whether it be at uh, the producers, the diamond mines that have started to shift to selling of rough diamonds to their clients through digital technologies. Of course, the expansion of uh, the use of technologies in the midstream, the manufacturers, and then of course, all the way down to the retailer and how the retailer today 
is becoming more aware and understanding that technology is an integral part of uh, um, uh, how they should operate in today's world. Um, so we can see that there is a dramatic increase in the use of technology. And uh, despite the many challenges that COVID-19 has presented to us in the past two years, there are many advantages that we can see are um, uh, coming from the situation where we were forced uh, to interact digitally. Um, I think the best example is uh, this webinar today, whereas a few years ago, um, no one would have thought of doing a webinar, a conference, an international conference digitally through Zoom. And today that is uh, more or less the norm. And I believe that as we look forward into the upcoming uh, years, we'll continue to see an expanded and accelerated use of technology in all segments of the diamond pipeline from the mines all the way down to the consumer. Um, as you can see on the slide here, um, uh, it's an image actually from one of the last video stores in Korea that shut down in 2012, uh, nearly 10 years ago. Once upon a time when we wanted to watch video content, we went to a video store. We rented a movie, uh, took it back home, put it in our VHS or beta uh, video uh, machine and watched the movie. Whereas today, uh, Netflix is basically the tool we use. And with many technological uh, revolutions, the actual need has not really changed. It's the way that the need is served. So if we look at today at the biggest technological companies in the world, whether it be Facebook or Google, they are basically advertising companies changing the way content is served uh, rather than through newspapers and television advertisements, it's through digital forms that are very much more focused uh, and very much more targeted. Uh, the same goes for Netflix. We're watching the same movies uh, that we watched 20 years ago. Just the way we watch the movies, the way that we uh, use the content is very much more different. And sometimes these so-called very small changes uh, actually make a huge difference and revolutionize uh, a different, the different industries that they're used in. Uh, we see that the same trend is happening in the diamond industry. And I believe that the way different processes that maybe today uh, look very, uh, maybe impossible to change, will dramatically change in the future due to technology. Uh, with the introduction of large amounts of data and the ability to analyze this data using artificial intelligence, I believe that we will start seeing or continue to see uh, dramatic changes um, in the diamond industry utilizing these advanced technologies. Uh, and this is one of the main focuses of Sarin is how to utilize the large amounts of data that are available today. As I mentioned, uh, over 100 million diamonds pass through our different technologies, how to utilize that data and advanced uh, processing of that data in order to create value at different stages of the pipeline. Um, and I'll be talking about a number of different areas uh, during the presentation. The first one I'd like to maybe focus on is uh, uh, diamond grading. Uh, diamond grading has been uh, around for many, many years, tens of years. Uh, diamond grading has been done manually, uh, utilizing uh, people that have been trained in order to grade uh, the diamonds, the color, the clarity, um, uh, cut and carat weight, uh, the four Cs, as well as additional parameters. But today we are starting to see a dramatic shift uh, towards uh, digital grading, uh, grading using technology. And the advantages of uh, utilizing technology uh, in order to do grading are dramatic. They are not just uh, shifting from a manual process to an automated process. Very similar to the way that uh, Netflix did not just add value by creating a digital ability to uh, use content. Um, before I maybe jump into it, I'd like to show a short movie uh, regarding uh, automated AI-based grading. Uh, if we can play the first movie, uh, thank you very much. We live in an age where change is happening faster than anyone could have imagined. More amazing is how fast the new is becoming the new normal. Artificial intelligence is making our life better, safer, and more efficient. In the world of diamonds, 
Serene was the first company to bring AI to four C's grading, providing unprecedented consistency and giving consumers absolute confidence in their diamond. But the truth is, we're only just warming up. As we begin the new decade, Sarin is about to change diamond grading beyond recognition. With an approach that marries AI, machine learning and big data to deliver e-grading. E-grading will empower diamond retailers with exciting new possibilities like never before. Bringing the precise diamonds you need exactly when you need them. Expanding diamond evaluation possibilities far beyond the four C's. Reducing costs. Streamlining diamond sourcing. Accelerating time to market. Supporting true personalization. A fascinating new era of e-grading is on its way. We'll meet you there. This is the diamond industry reimagined. Um, so basically over the past uh, several years, uh, grading uh, using technology has been uh, developed uh, in order to transform the manual process, which is prone to uh, inconsistencies to a fully automated process, uh, whether it be color grading, clarity grading, and of course, cut grade, which has already existed for the past uh, two decades using technology to grade cuts. Uh, the two final frontiers of color and clarity are now possible to grade using technology uh, by analyzing uh, large amounts of data uh, and then enabling uh, artificial intelligence uh, based systems to grade the diamonds uh, automatically. Um, naturally, just like with any uh, new technologies, uh, there is still a long way to go being able to cover uh, different types of diamonds, whether it be fancy colors, uh, or other segments of diamonds that may be very particular, but uh, the ability today to grade uh, the four seeds fully with technology is already here. Um, but it goes a lot beyond just the regular four seeds. Um, when we talk about grading, there are many parameters uh, that today are important uh, to the diamond retailer or to the consumer that are not necessarily covered in uh, the typical traditional diamond grading of the four seeds whether it be personal preferences like tinges of color, whether it be certain types of inclusions, cracks, black spots, and so onwards that uh, certain uh, uh, consumers or certain retail brands would prefer uh, not having within their goods. So the ability to fine tune, uh, the ability to understand what type of goods uh, are being purchased uh, is possible today with technology. And if again, maybe I compare that with um, the traditional videos uh, moving to digital uh, videos uh, uh, with Netflix, when you used to want to understand a category of movies, it used to be action movies or horror movies or drama. Uh, but today, the ability to fine tune what kind of movie you want to look, if you look in Netflix, it's uh, graded according to the percentage of probability that you will like the movie because there are many other parameters that are taken into consideration. And this is all possible by using big data, by analyzing the data, and then be able to provide you uh, with the type of movie you want. The same uh, becomes possible uh, with diamonds, uh, connecting very much more effectively between what diamonds uh, type of con certain consumer segment wants, whether it be in Japan or Korea or the US, which are looking for different types of diamonds, different qualities, different preferences, uh, so the ability to grade diamonds using technology opens up a very much wider range of possibilities than possible doing manual grading. Naturally, um, uh, one of the biggest advantages of automated grading is the ability to provide very consistent and very accurate grading. No longer are parameters uh, like uh, fatigue uh, or uh, the mood of the grader or the culture impacting how the grading is done. Um, 
technology is very consistent. It's not impacted by any environmental um, parameters or any human factors. And therefore you're able to achieve a very much higher level of accuracy and repeatability. Um, with today's consumer uh, who trusts technology, we believe that this is uh, uh, the new trust uh, in tomorrow's world. It's the trust of technology rather than manual processes, which as I mentioned, are prone to error. Um, we go along beyond uh, just diamond grading, as I mentioned, many different parameters of the, draft, of the polished diamond can be graded through technology, not just the typical four Cs, uh, the ability to grade other parameters such as beauty or what would call light performance uh, become possible with technology, imaging of uh, the polished diamond with very high levels of actuary, accuracy to provide the consumer uh, information about uh, that polished diamond all become possible with technology. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the leading uh, retail brands in Korea, uh, Golden Dew, uh, utilize the technology in order to present uh, the beauty of their diamonds, the light performance uh, of their uh, diamonds in the retail store itself through digital technology that they can present uh, to the consumer. When we talk about uh, technology, uh, sometimes we get stuck with just information, with data. Um, but we believe that a very important part of today's technology is how to deliver an experience to the consumer rather than just information. Um, therefore, uh, the importance of taking data and presenting it in a way that creates an experience in the store is a very important part of the revolution of technology in today's world. Uh, we'll see a little bit later on in the presentation how uh, you can utilize different types of data within the sales process in the store to create that in-store experience that not only provides information, but provides, as I said, an experience within the store. Um, I'd like to talk about a number of different trends at the consumer level and at the retail level uh, that are um, uh, very relevant for today's consumer. Uh, a lot of talk, of course, about millennials uh, and the new younger generation. Naturally, uh, we cannot not talk about uh, the digital experience uh, with the younger generation. Uh, today, the sales process actually starts at home uh, on uh, the, the cell phone, whether it be, um, or the tablet uh, or the computer, uh, that the retailer, that the consumer starts doing his um, uh, homework on what product he wants to buy, where he wants to buy it. And the whole sales process actually starts at home uh, through digital um, uh, tools uh, that the consumer uh, checks information about the product he wants to buy. Um, but it's not enough just to remain uh, with the experience uh, that starts at home. It's very important that this digital experience continues into the store to connect between the uh, initial part of the process that starts at home with the process in the digital store and therefore enabling uh, digital information for your consumer becomes not nice to have but a critical uh, part of uh, the um, sales process. Um, naturally we talked about uh, information. Today's consumer is looking for very high levels of information of trustworthy information to be able to really know what he's buying, regardless of the product, whether it be a diamond or even a, a, a pair of shoes or a, an electronic device. So understanding what the consumer, is, uh, the consumer is buying becomes very important. So providing transparent, uh, trustworthy information about the product uh, today, again, is a mandatory part of selling any product in today's world. Um, so the ability to provide this information in a transparent way to the consumer uh, is definitely a trend we're seeing expanding more and more uh, within uh, the general retail, as well as, of course, in the diamond industry. And being able to present this information in a very consumer-orientated way uh, to today's younger consumer. The last trend, again, which... Uh, for those of you who may have heard uh, the webinar uh, from the peers yesterday, the Insight Report, uh, there is a very uh, significant growing trend uh, of sustainability 
in general in today's world uh, for um, and the diamond industry is no different the ability to understand where your diamond uh, or diamond jewelry comes from how it was manufactured uh, under what conditions um, and how it contributed to the communities how it impacted the environment is becoming an integral part of the product um, therefore one of the uh, capabilities that technology uh, can assist with is the ability to track the diamond from the mine through the manufacturing process and all the way down to the consumer. In fact, uh, from the Insight report uh, yesterday that was published, uh, we can see that nearly 70% of today's uh, customers or consumers are looking for products that contribute to society and are actually willing to pay more, uh, anywhere between 10 to 20% more for products that are sustainable, that contribute to their communities and the environment. Um, and we see this trend growing, of course, not only in the diamond industry, but uh, as well as in the uh, uh, most other industries as well. Uh, we have just introduced uh, a year or two ago, uh, the diamond journey, which is a technological capability of tracking the diamond through data, verifiable data from the mine all the way through uh, down to the consumer. Um, one of the uh, um, uh, aspects of uh, traceability is the ability not only to provide information, as I mentioned earlier, but to tell a story, uh, to be able to show how that diamond actually transformed from a rough diamond that was mined, for example, in Botswana, uh, into a beautiful polished diamond, uh, and the whole process along the way, being able to visualize that uh, and show that and present that to the consumer. Um, therefore, utilizing the data that is collected uh, throughout the manufacturing process, uh, we are able to present in a very visual, appealing way uh, to the consumer uh, how that diamond was manufactured, where the diamond came from, and visualize that to the consumer in a way that he can connect to. As you can see here in the, the, the slide, uh, there are ability to provide digital information, as well as even printing out um, a physical replica of the rough diamond to show the consumer how his rough diamond actually looked like, as well as providing information about uh, the communities and how uh, the diamond mining contributed to those communities, how the environment was protected, how diamond manufacturers, um, again, are becoming more and more sustainable, whether it becoming carbon neutral, uh, how they take care again of their employees, and so on and so forth. So I believe that sustainability uh, is becoming an integral part of uh, the diamond industry and the ability to track diamonds from the source to the consumer will become the standard of tomorrow, uh, just as 4Cs uh, is today a standard of how to um, uh, price and how to sell uh, polished diamonds. Um, a few, um, just before I show a few examples, uh, real life examples, uh, use cases from uh, some of the uh, retail stores globally of how traceability is used in the store. I'd like to show a short movie about diamond traceability. If you could play the second movie. Thank you. Every joy, every trial, every love, every laugh, Every rise, every fall. Just like a person, every diamond has a unique story waiting to be told. With Serene Diamond Journey, you can now chart the unique story of your diamond from its source all the way to becoming a beautiful sparkling gem. From the mapping of its interior and exterior birthmarks, to revealing its latent beauty, to creating its ultimate shape. Everything is preserved. Nothing is forgotten. Providing unquestionable proof of diamond provenance and the ultimate in scientifically proven traceability. So now, you can know your diamond as well as you know yourself. 
serene diamond journey. Are you ready to discover yours? Uh, so going back to just show a few use cases uh, in the stalls, uh, we'll take a number of examples just quickly. Uh, by the way, the presentation is available uh, for all uh, the viewers that you can look afterwards. And um, here we can actually see uh, one of uh, our uh, client in a retail store in Japan uh, that uh, uh, sells their diamonds uh, loose and then enables the client uh, to uh, set them in a jewelry piece of their choice. Uh, so the client will then choose a polished diamond. Uh, but as we know, if you look at a polished diamond, uh, let's say of uh, a half a carat G VS1 quality and another polished diamond of the same size, color and clarity, they look very similar. Whereas the rough diamond uh, of these two polished diamonds can be very, very different. Every rough diamond is unique. Uh, and what this uh, retailer has done is actually uh, taken uh, the actual rough diamond. Uh, we have re uh, recreated uh, the replica of the actual rough diamond that this polished diamond was actually polished from. And the consumer can actually see the rough diamond. If they scan the QR, they can see the entire journey from uh, rough to polish and the story of the manufacturing. And basically this is used as part of the sales process in the store. And so engaging the consumer with the journey of the diamond uh, as it traveled from the mine all the way down to the consumer and enabling the consumer to experience this journey. Uh, so this is an example from Japan. Um, we work with uh, uh, many, uh, with all the, all the players in the pipeline from the mines through the manufacturers and all the way down to the retail. So many different partners that you're able to source uh, diamonds from with the diamond journey. Um, another example from Japan, uh, using uh, traceability of the diamond journey, a special design called the Sakura, which is uh, um, uh, uh, the, the uh, blossoming uh, in, the, in the summer um, and uh, utilizing again, uh, digitally information of that diamond journey as it travels from the mind to the consumer. Um, another example of how it's used in, in Australia, uh, providing again a replica of the rough diamond in a very uh, uh, nice set uh, um, showing that uh, diamond journey. Um, I think one of the, uh, just to summarize maybe, uh, so we can have a little bit of time for some questions and three main trends, which I think as uh, should be um, uh, uh, focused on at the retail level uh, with regards to technology. One is becoming digital. The ability to shift um, uh, uh, the focus and the engagement with the consumer digitally. This does not mean selling only online. It means how do you engage your client from the moment he starts looking for the product online? How do you draw them to the store uh, through digital means? And how do you continue that digital experience in the store itself? So the shift to digital uh, is something that is here. It's only accelerating uh, and it should be embraced. Um, it does not mean moving to sell online uh, predominantly or only, but how do you combine the digital world and the physical world together? The second trend as we talked about was uh, sustainability. Uh, and in the diamond industry, that means uh, um, being able to understand where the diamond comes from, how it was manufactured, um, and the story of the diamond uh, from the mine to the, uh, to the consumer, the diamond journey. And the last trend that we discussed was uh, the shift from manual grading to uh, digital grading, what we call e-grading, uh, which we believe that uh, in a number of years, just like uh, video stores uh, disappeared and the last video store uh, that existed in Korea was 2012, we believe that diamond grading will shift to technological uh, um, uh, um, means, uh, therefore eliminating the need for physical grading labs and shifting that ability to grade diamonds much closer to the client. Um, thank you very much. Uh, and if you have any questions, we'll be happy to take them now. Thank you, Mr. Block, uh, for your presentation on the new technology of the diamond industry. I think there are so many new uh, technologies that uh, 
we should catch up with. Uh, still, I think I am on a you know video generation. So <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I have some uh, questions from the audience. Um, okay, it's about um, e grading. Can you hear me, David? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. It's about it's a e grading meaning. Uh, are you giving a e report only, not the paper report? Okay, that's actually a good question. Um, we believe that uh, the consumer today is shifting to only digital. There are of course uh, sustainability aspects to that of not using paper, um, but today's consumer today is basically connected. 24 seven to his digital uh, phone or e uh, iPad. And um, so we believe very much in digital, but we of course do have the old fashioned uh, paper reports. Uh, so um, that is of course available, but we do believe very strongly in digital. Um, and for those clients who still want uh, uh, paper reports, we of course do provide them, but we see uh, the switch to digital only uh, by many of our clients that are shifting to digital uh, reports only rather than uh, paper reports. Uh, and, and with this the question, is e-grading for, um, you mean doing all the four Cs, uh, for uh, what size of uh, diamonds? Is it there's any limit? And is there any limit on the shapes also? So as with any technology, the technology starts with, uh, I would say, the main uh, stream diamonds, um, uh, larger sizes, uh, typical shapes, but there is no uh, technological limitation to the technology. Uh, the adoption of the technology, as with uh, any uh, um, new technology in the diamond industry, uh, generally starts with the more typical and common uh, types of diamonds and then shifts to the more uh, extremes, um, so smaller diamonds, uh, irregular shapes, but uh, technologically wise, there is no limitations to technology. And we believe that actually technology will enable uh, to grade uh, cheaper and smaller diamonds cost effectively as the technology uh, evolves and develops, uh, becomes more cost effective and faster. Oh, I see, thank you. Um Another question is about this e grading. Is the is done at your uh, lab only, or is it really kind of is this kind of instrument is available for <laughs> average uh, wholesalers or retailers? So uh, the idea of the technology, just like as I mentioned with Netflix, is to move the technology uh, to the client, um, not having grading labs that need to send the goods. Sending diamonds to a grading lab takes time. Uh, it's expensive. You have cost of insurance, the cost of money during the time that uh, uh, the diamond is shipped to the grading lab. So there are many uh, very significant overheads of shipping a diamond to a grading lab. And our objective is to move the technology to the manufacturer, to the wholesaler, uh, so that they will be able to do it in-house on one hand, but being able to do it without uh, uh, um, uh, influencing or affecting the grading process. So the way it works is that the technology uh, is located at the client, the information, the diamond is scanned, the information goes up to the serene cloud. We analyze the data and grade the diamond and then send back uh, the grading to the client. So uh, yes, um, the objective is that diamonds will be graded, uh, what we call at the source, as close to the source as possible, that will improve uh, cycle times for the industry enable much quicker time to market and sourcing of diamonds. There are many, many advantages uh, that what e-grading will provide. We have been testing for the past uh, three years the technology in our grading labs. We have grading labs in India and Israel uh, that we utilize the technology. But uh, as of uh, the end of this year and beginning of next year, we are starting to introduce the technology to clients in the field. So it's a suite of technologies that enable grading of the different parameters um, uh, that make up the four Cs and beyond that four Cs. Yes, uh, this uh, it's a very simple question. Uh, how long does it take to do the E-grading for one carat round? 
So there is not really any significant difference in terms of the time it takes to grade a one carat or a half carat or five carat diamond. Uh, the time it takes is very short. Um, I think uh, the alternative is sending it to a grading lab. And that's the comparison of the time. Today, uh, due to the uh, scale up after COVID, grading can take anywhere between four weeks to six weeks or even eight weeks. Whereas once you have technology in house, if you want to grade a diamond tomorrow, uh, it's possible to do it for tomorrow. So that's why I said cycle times uh, will be reduced significantly. In that way, you can reduce inventories, uh, um, not uh, have to uh, hold large quantities of inventories, uh, reduce the amount of dead inventory uh, that is not suitable rejections. So for example, when retailers buy polished diamonds, many times they send a certain percentage back to their supplier because they do not meet the retailer's criteria, even though they meet the four C's criteria. So the ability to reduce rejections uh, is also uh, one of the big advantages of utilizing e-grading. That's, that's great. Thank you. Uh, another question? Oh, uh, it's about uh, Diamond's uh, journey and the traceability question. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the diamond origin report questions, um, it's been around for a while. And um, how can you, uh, you said scientifically prove the origin or the, the mine of the diamonds? But as you know, De Beers uh, do not uh, give them specific mines. So, so naturally, yeah, a very good question. Naturally, uh, the mines are an integral part of uh, diamond traceability. And of course, uh, in order to provide origin, there is a need for participation of the mines uh, in diamond traceability. We work together with many of the mines uh, globally, uh, and we believe that as traceability becomes more of a mandatory or a, a not necessarily mandatory, but a standard that is expected by the consumer and by the retailer, that all or most mines will uh, engage in traceability programs. So uh, we're not yet there uh, that all mines uh, engage with traceability programs, but I think we're well on our way. And at Serene, we work with many of the diamond mines globally uh, in order to start uh, the process at the mine. Uh, you mentioned that the Beers does not mention the mine, uh, but uh, just uh, a number of countries of origin, that's correct. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure that the consumer needs to know the specific country. Again, that's a question that I think many of the retailers ask themselves. Do we really want to uh, share the country of origin or is it more important that uh, uh, the origin of the diamond comes from a sustainable source that you are able to track and able to know where it comes from um, rather than knowing that it came from Botswana or uh, Russia or Canada. So I think that's a good question, but I believe that the consumer and the retailer still hasn't really answered, do we really need the actual specific origin? Uh, but in order to do so, of course, the participation of the mines is uh, uh, crucial. Yes, I mean, some uh, consumers want to know specific answers and some do not care. That's what, what they, what's going on uh, these yeah. days, as you know. A lot of products are like in made in, you know, so and so yeah. countries and, and so forth. I believe that if the consumer will want to know uh, the origin of the diamonds in terms of country or even mine, that the industry will uh, enable that to happen. So I think it's it's a matter of what the consumer wants, and if the consumer wants that, I believe he will receive it uh, eventually. Yes. Uh, Another question is about this traceability. Is it uh, white diamonds only, or is it available uh, for the fancy color diamonds? Because you're no, it's only white. Yeah. It's available. Traceability is relevant for all types of diamonds. Um, uh, there is no limitation in terms of the ability to do traceability on fancy colors. Um, of course, fancy colors due to their rarity and uh, the fact that they are very much more expensive traceability becomes very important. Uh, we didn't talk about it in today's seminar, but we also have a lot of different developments on fingerprinting of diamonds. So you are able to uh, track the polished diamond once it is uh, fully polished uh, and be able to provide a, a unique ID uh, for a polished diamond. 
Um, and naturally, uh, for uh, fancy colors, uh, that uh, is, of course, uh, uh, possible through the technology as well. Yes, you said uh, some retailers in Japan uh, showing this uh, diamond traceability report, right? Your report. Yeah, Japan, Australia, Europe, uh, US, uh, Singapore, uh, many uh, countries already, really retailers in different countries are already adopting traceability. And I think, as I mentioned in the Insight report yesterday from the Beers, we see the importance of sustainability aspects uh, ranking very high globally in uh, consumer preference. And as I said, are willing to pay more for diamonds that are traceable. That's, that's uh, something of very recent development. Okay, yeah, great. I recommend that anyone who hasn't read the Insight Report uh, take a good read. It has very valuable and important information. Okay, great. Thank you so much, David. And uh, thank, thank you, you for and joining us you know, early hours from uh, your area, right? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's morning over here. Yes, and then uh, hope to see you and then you know, in person in the near future. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much.